So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to the keynote luncheon on behalf of the Halifax Port Authority. It's been a very busy and informative session this morning, starting with the remarks from Minister Ashfield and carrying on through two panels with innovators and cargo movers, operators, and the people who actually make freight go. So I thank them again for their contribution and hope you enjoyed the sessions, which were quite informative this morning. I would also at this point like to thank the sponsor for this afternoon's luncheon, our platinum sponsor for the event, CN Rail. Uh, we are joined here by quite a few CN representatives at the table this afternoon, and the port prizes its relationship with CN as one of the great strategic strengths of the Port of Halifax. Thank you to CN. Please join me in an applause. You will also notice, similar to the format from the business sessions this morning, there are a series of question cards on your table. After the keynote speaker, Mr. Andy Ellis, has finished his presentation from Walmart, we will take written questions up on the podium for response for the time period that Mr. Ellis has to spend with us here. So thank you very much for joining us here for the luncheon. Enjoy your lunch. We'll get underway, and we'll be back up shortly with uh, Mr. Ellis. Thank you. The Port of Halifax is a rail port. Rail is a very key determinant of the success of the port and bringing the infrastructure that the port has developed over the last 10 years to be able to handle the biggest ships, East Coast, North America, global trade will see for a decade or two to come to the advantage, to the use, to the facilitation of Canada's trade and to make it available to world-class global leaders such as Walmart to, to use the infrastructure in the Port of Halifax. To this end, the Port of Halifax is very fortunate to have as its rail provider and partner the top operating ratio railway in North America, an industry leader in innovation, and one of the most robust enterprise operations in global transportation that anybody can deal with, CN Rail. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce Paul Waite, the Vice President of Intermodal for CN Rail, to introduce our keynote speaker for lunch. Paul, please. It's always hard to follow George. He's got such a wonderful FM broadcaster voice. Uh, and, and just for everyone's information, we are, we are customer focused. We don't really talk about OR anymore. Especially these days, as the steamship lines uh, you know, struggle to make money, it's not something we, uh, we, we really emphasize. Anyway, it's my distinct honor to introduce our keynote speaker today. Uh, Andy Ellis is the Senior Vice President Supply Chain Logistics for Walmart Canada. In this role, he holds operating responsibility over Walmart Canada's domestic logistics system and global uh, supply chain network. And I'd be remiss uh, if I didn't say that uh, obviously he's uh, continues to be a very large and valued customer of CNs. Andy has over 25 years of experience within the retail sector. He began his career in 1983 in the United Kingdom within in the in-store operations. He took on a series of progressively senior roles within the same area before being appointed as store manager for ASDA, Walmart, Walmart's UK-based subsidiary in 1987. In the 1990s, Andy moved from in-store operations to ASDA's head office. He assumed general manager roles in several functional areas, including replenishment, merchandising, and logistics. In 2004, he took on the role of director of supply chain for ASDA, and in 2008, in 2008 he moved to Canada to assume his current position. Please uh, welcome Andy Ellis. You might guess that I'm not from these parts by um, my accent. so. Being in Nova Scotia for the first time, I feel a bit closer to home than I've been for the last two years, because if I go not far that way, um, I'll end up back in England. So um, thank you for uh, inviting me here today. It's always a great pleasure to uh, stand up and talk about some of the 
uh, things that go on inside Walmart. Um, I've got a few slides for you to, um, to go through. Um, but first of all, um, you know, uh, being, being, I think we've, you, some people touched on it this morning, no business can operate in isolation anymore. And ports and carriers and shippers and ocean cargo handlers, they're all an integral part of what we do. And our business could not operate without the people in this room supporting us. So from everyone at Walmart, thank you very, very much for everything you do in supporting our business and our business growth over in the past and obviously on a, on a go forward basis. So um, I also uh, am proud of them to announce that um, the, the cargo that we push through um, the port of Halifax is growing. I'm told it's 20% up year on year and I'm sure that will continue to grow as we source more and more of our products through, um, through the Indian continent, through Bangladesh. Um, most of the goods that are coming out, linens, sheets, towels, and clothing are coming from those areas. So um, hopefully that port growth will continue on a go forward basis. So what I'm here to talk to you about today is, um, is sustainability and some of the, um, the efforts that we put into, not only in Walmart Canada, but also in Walmart worldwide. So there's about 15 or so slides. Um, if you let me go through them, and then I'll be happy to take questions at the end, um, and we'll see how we get on. So, um, the first one is a bit of background on Walmart. Um, Walmart next year is 50 years old, and it's quite amazing to think that this, the company started in what they call the Five and Dime store in Bentonville, Arkansas. And today, we look at Walmart, and it is by, by far the biggest retailer in the world but is also but, you know, one of the biggest companies in the world. Um, we employ over 2.2 million people, and we operate in 28 countries. Um, and we're always looking for opportunities to, to expand and grow the business in areas around the world. Uh, and you can see from the map behind me, without me going through it country by country, if you look at the number at the bottom of the screen, which I'm probably blocking, it says there's 9,667 um, retail units throughout the world. So it is a, a huge, huge company. And even me, stood up here, does not really understand the size and scale of Walmart worldwide. It is a, a huge company. Um, one of the uh, benefits of being a big company is you can use that scale for the greater good. And one of the things we're trying to focus on is using that scale to drive the sustainability agenda throughout all areas of, of the business. And these are the sort of global goals that Mike Duke, our global CEO, set for the business a couple of years ago. And these have stood, st st you know, stood the test of time over the last three or four years. One is to be supplied 100% by renewable energy. The second one is to create zero waste. And the third one is to sell products that sustain people and the environment. So as I go through these slides, most of what I talk about will come back to those three points up there. Um, we have a very, very simple business model. And again, it's a worldwide um, objective. It's, it's common in all countries. Some countries are further down the, the path than others, but it is a common thread throughout the business. And the first one is you grow your sales. You know, Walmart is all about growing sales. The second one is you operate for less. The third one is you buy for less, okay? And the fourth one is you sell for less. And it is a, a virtuous circle as it go, keeps going round. And it's a very, very simple model that we use throughout the world. By selling more, you reduce your costs. By reducing your costs, you sell more. By selling more, the whole thing starts again. Does that make sense? Very, very simple. Um, from a sustainability point of view, we don't just focus on one element of the business. We try and involve everybody. So this little wheel up here from operations, the way we run our stores, with the way we deal, and some of the things we ask our suppliers and vendors and, and partners to, to focus on. And I think we touched on that this morning, some of, the, um, some of the presentations about Walmart and other retail businesses um, working with partners to, to drive the, the environmental agenda from start to finish. We work within the communities, and I'll talk to you about some of the things that are going on around the world to drive you know, and buy locally. 
um, our customers. A lot, of, a lot of what we do is trying to educate customers on environmental policies. If you think about years ago, washing detergent was in big bottles like this. Okay? That's, liquid is very heavy. Okay? So by going to more you know, concentrated washing detergents, Imagine how much air and how much liquid we took out of the supply chain, which means you can get more on a, in, a, in a box, more in a container, and there's less, less water being shipped around, around the supply chain, which, again, is good business practice. So some of that education with customers is when you put those new products on the shelves, you've got to actually educate them in what it means because you know, some of these things are, are quite difficult to, to get across in the early stages. And, and last of all, but our, our associates, you know, we, we work very closely with, with our associates to, to drive the, um, the environmental agenda, everything from recycling and so on and so on and so on. So it is very, very all-encompassing the way our approach to sustainability in Walmart. Um, we are experimenting with all three types of renewable energy. You know, we've got solar, we've got wind, and we've got an efficient fleet of buildings. The stores we build today are 30% more efficient than the ones we built five or six years ago through our sustainability efforts, through using, you know, smart ways of working, smart equipment, and using renewable energy. Um, one that's close to my heart, we recently built a, a distribution centre in Balzac, which is in Alberta, and uh, it was a greenfield site, um, and we set off with, a, with one objective, to build the most sustainable distribution centre that we could possibly build. And the team that, uh, that built that distribution centre surpassed all my expectations. You know, the building that we've landed, which is fully operational now, is 60% more efficient than its sister distribution centre, which is in Ontario. The whole fleet of um, material handling equipment is operated by hydrogen. The whole building has LED lights, it has smart refrigeration, it has heat reclamation, and all sorts of other environmentally friendly practices from the moment we stuck a spade in the ground to the moment we opened the building. It is a, an absolute um, marvel, really, in what we achieved in 18 months. So my open invitation to you all is if you want to go and visit this site, the doors are open. Uh, you know, all you need to do is get on an aeroplane, fly to Alberta, Calgary, I should say, and then um, a 20-minute drive, and you can go and walk around it. And they're quite used to having visitors looking at what, what's in that building. So we're very, very proud. And as you can see from this picture, you've got hydrogen tanks, you've got solar and wind all combined in one, one facility. So we're very, very proud of that. Um, it also extends to our stores. We have an environmental store in Burlington in Ontario. This store is about 60% more efficient than, than a normal store. And again, it's got lots of innovation in there. It's got geothermal heating. I think there's about 15 kilometers of pipes that run under the parking lot, which is all generating heat so that we can heat the floors. So again, there's no blowing air in that building. It's all heated floors, and it gives you a much more efficient um, way of operating the store. Recycling is, is from start to finish. Um, and also, if you look, you've got um, skylights. So during the day, when it's light outside, you go in most supermarkets and most buildings, all they have is the lights on. So what we built into this store was harvesting the, the daylight so that we could turn down the lights in the building and save electricity. So a lot of the environmental things that we, we work on are very, very simple ideas, just need executing. Um, if you look at this picture, this is recycling personified. If you look on the right, you can recycle your coffee cups. Then you go next, you can recycle electronics. Then we can say we can recycle um, polystyrene. Then you've got plastic bags, light bulbs, and then you know, organic matter and on paper, et cetera, et cetera. So in, most, in all of our stores, all of the head office and all of the distribution centers, you will see facilities like this so that we can actually get nearer and nearer to that zero waste target that I talked about at the beginning. Um, come on to products. Um, again, you know, customers, you know, like to see new products on the shelves. 
what we want to do is try and introduce them to products that are environmentally friendly and manufactured and made in a sustainable way. So we're looking, partnering with, with branded goods like Wholesome Goodness. We, uh, we are the largest user of cotton in the world. You can imagine the amount of apparel that Walmart sells throughout the world and how much cotton's involved in that. So we work with partners to, you know, to get environmental uh, cotton and build that into our clothing programs. So, you know, cotton t-shirts, George t-shirts, you know, they're very good for underneath you, you know, just general wear. They're a great t-shirt and they're all organic cotton. Um, and we're also developing our own label um, products, which is this great value brand underneath, which is all about uh, environmentally friendly, sustainable, certified products on our shelves that are at that, you know, good prices. Because again, one of the things you're trying to overcome, um, I don't know why I'm getting feedback here, but um, um, is um, being environmentally friendly shouldn't cost more money. Shall I move again? I'll, do, I'll stand still. Okay. So it extends, our, event, our environmental policies extend to the products that we sell on our shelves. And I think there's over a thousand environmentally friendly, sustainable products on our shelves as we speak today. Um, we're also committed to um, partnering with, um, if you, you know, when I mentioned before, there's 28 countries around the world, and we've got a, a big push on buying as local as far as possible. So I think Walmart Canada's got some very aggressive targets to be sourced local produce where it's available at the, at, at the moment in time. And I think we've just launched an initiative where we're going to source $1 billion worth of um, produce from 1 million small uh, producers around the world by 2015. So these, these policies that we introduce and this energy that we put behind becomes infectious. Because Walmart do it, everyone starts to, starts to do it. So that is why I say, you know, one of the things about being big is you can use your scale to impact lots of other areas of the supply chain. Um, so that's a big commitment, to buy local. Um, my sustainability programme. Um, you know, I've talked to you before about the, the top of the tree, which is the associates. We encourage all associates to to be involved in sustainability. We ask them to have their own sustainability programs. Mine personally is I cycle about 300 kilometers a week, of which 100 of them is back and two to work twice a week. So, um, you know, that gets me out of my car. It's obviously, I don't start the engine and I sweat a bit getting to work. But that's just one. People are giving up smoking. They're obviously recycling. And I think we've got over 60,000 employees, associates, with, um, with some form of, of MSP uh, as we speak, and over 400,000 since the scheme started. So some people have more than one. Um, so that's a, a great scheme. Even, even the chief executive uh, has his own MSP, and he joins me some morning cycling to work. So it is from the top right the way down, certainly in Walmart, Canada. And um, last but not least, um, there's no point in putting all this effort behind uh, sustainable environmental programs if you're not willing to share it. If we want to keep it to ourselves, then what's the point? So, as I said to you before, you're all very welcome to go and tour Balzac. You're all very welcome to go and tour the Burlington store and see the geothermal heating and all the other things we've done. You're welcome to come around the home office and see all the the MSPs on the wall and the recycling bins and all those other good things. But what we did um, last year, um, we invited 350 senior leaders from influential businesses. And we all got together in Vancouver and we talked about, excuse me, how we could drive this uh, environmental agenda. And we, David Suzuki, you, you probably know better than me, spoke and recognised Walmart for the efforts that they put into driving that agenda and trying to influence others to, to take actions themselves. So it was a, a huge success. Um, 350 retailers in one room at the same time, uh, not just retailers, but also you know, people like yourselves and suppliers, 350 in one room at the same time talking about the same thing is a pretty mean feat, really, and it was a huge success. And last but not least, um, 
we were awarded um, the 2011 um, Global Award for Sustainable Excellence. And again, that was a, a national award that was given to us for this year, um, which goes along the way to recognising what we do, not just in Walmart Canada, but also Walmart around the world. And, you know, having the benefit of coming from the UK three years ago, and stand here now talking about Walmart Canada, I can honestly say what we do in Canada goes on in the UK, it goes on in the US, it goes on in Argentina, it goes in Brazil, it goes on everywhere. This is something that is driven from right at the very top of Walmart through Mike Duke and Billy Scott before him. Um, and with that, with that incentive from the top, the momentum that it drives throughout the business is phenomenal, really. So um, that's just a snapshot. I think that the biggest um, opportunity for all of you is to find out more. Um, there is lots of um, information out on the web. There are three sites you can look at. You can go to Walmart, uh, Walmart's you know, home office site. You can go to sharegreen.ca and you can go to walmartcsr.ca. All the information I've talked to you about, all our goals, all our targets, all our successes is built into those into those, those sites there. So I'd encourage you to go and look at them. And like I say, once again, extend that invitation to you all if you want to go and see what is probably the most um, environmentally friendly distribution centre in North America, if not the world, then um, all you need to do is take, let us know and um, take an aeroplane to Calgary. Okay. So, short and sweet. Thank you for listening. Um, any questions? Thank you very much, Andy. We will be receiving questions now. There are question forms on your table if you'd like to send them up here to the, uh, to the front for Mr. Ellis to address. Uh, your comments hit home here in the Port of Halifax, sir. The Halifax Port Authority in particular is very cognizant of sustainability issues, environmental management. I will put in a shameless plug for the port here that we were the first Canadian port to have an ISO 14000 accredited environmental management system. Do I hear some applause out there? Okay. And we continue to be very focused on this. So maybe I could ask you, Mr. Ellis, to comment on, you've given us a good example of the internal commitment from the top down. You've given us a, uh, a very good illustration of how Walmart looks at sourcing product. Can you comment a little bit, please, about how Walmart values seeing that kind of a sustainability environmental management system outreach in the people who actually contract services to you, who actually do the service for Walmart and your business partners? Um, I think, uh, to try and answer your question, we are very, very transparent about what we do within Walmart. And um, we, we don't ask people to do things that we don't feel are, um, are achievable or necessary. So, any partner that we partner with, whether it be a transport company, a trucking haulage company, uh, like an ocean cargo handler, then we ask them to be as transparent with us as we are with them. Um, and some of the practices um, that we, we work on um, are done for the common good. So it's, it's what I said before, you know, no business can operate in isolation anymore. And the more you can join up with the person who was before you or the person that's after you, um, the better. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question or not, but the value of, of working collaboratively um, with all partners is the key to success. You can't do this alone. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you for that. A uh, question from the floor. What is Walmart doing with the carriers it contracts with to green the inbound transportation. A little bit of a, a follow-up to that question. There's a, a specific kind of initiative you look at for your carriers. Uh, well, obviously, I can't speak for individual carriers um, because there are many of them. Um, but I go back to my previous answer, which is, you know, most of the carriers, if not all of the carriers, um, are using um, green equipment, as green equipment as we can possibly get our hands on. Um, we're working hard to make sure no truck is running empty. Um, so, you know, full trucks in, full trucks out is the, is the, the obvious, um, obvious, obvious answer. 
Um, so, I, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd revert back to my previous answer. It's all about collaboration. Another question, sir. Are there examples that you could draw on or, or uh, help the audience understand that are good examples of where Walmart's outreach to suppliers in return has produced something where a supplier has come to Walmart with a sustainability program of their own and Walmart has said, that's a good idea and we might even incorporate that ourselves? Um, I don't think um, anything that Walmart do, does is revolutionary as far as um, it's new and it's not been done before. I think most of the initiatives... So if I go back to um, the distribution centre, there are hydrogen-operated um, fuel cells in some distribution centre in Canada, in North America, certainly in the UK. But no one has done it for the entire fleet in, that, in one facility that we know of. So that wasn't something that, you know, we thought, hey, we've got a great idea. It was something that someone brought to us and said, um, can we partner with you to try and develop, um, you know, alongside our overall sustainable get goals that we'd got for that, bit, for that particular facility. So um, there are probably many, many examples where a supplier comes along or a partner comes along and wants to work with us and we embrace it and we make it, make it work. And one final question, sir, if we may. There's a, this must come from an engineer. How did your construction of your new ultra-efficient operation, how did the construction of that facility compare with the construction costs of a traditional facility before that? Um, there are certain elements, elements of it which cost more. So the refrigeration system cost more. But um, one, of the, one of the pieces of governance that is uh, very good in Walmart is um, we have very, very strict return on investment targets. So there is nothing that went into that building that didn't give us at least the minimum and surpass our existing ROI targets. So when you looked at putting LED lights into that building, um, it's a refrigerated building and normal light bulbs generate heat. So when you look at the cost comparison between a normal light bulb and an LED light bulb, they cost more money. But when you look at the savings that gave you because LED doesn't, doesn't generate heat and the savings it gave you in electricity and maintenance, then the ROI paid back. And it's the same with the material handling. You know, uh, in the early stages, uh, a reach truck that has got a hydrogen fuel cell costs more money. But when you look at the, um, the space you save in the DC through not having batteries. You don't have to re recharge batteries, which uses electricity. Um, the downtime on the truck, when you look at it from end to end, there was a significant payback. So there is nothing in that building from an engineering standpoint that doesn't give us a significant uh, payback and return. Great. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ellis, for your insight and speech on the sustainability programs and the fact that this is a very significant part of the global transportation of goods and services and critical for the future of the planet. So thank you for your time. Thank you for coming to Halifax today. Thank you for being a guest of the Halifax Port Authority. Thank you for your insight into Walmart's sustainable business practices. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.